And a team that's trying to fill a hole, I think, is Gene Segura going to the Marlins. Like the Marlins made a move. Yeah, they made, you know, they we, Marlins, just the we just talked about it. The Marlins are on the board. It. They are on the board. Right. Um, two years, seventeen million, with a club option for a third year. I, I it's mean, cool. It is a I move it. in baseball. I, I mean, I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna hate on the move because like, it's not a terrible decision. But like, I think Gene Segura could be like a good kind of like clubhouse presence to kind of like work with jazz chisholm or something like that mm. but like it's just kind of the the miami marlins have done nothing this off season. they made like what we said they made like one trade earlier and then they did this like yeah. they've made two moves this off season, and this, i kind of expected them to do more and they really haven't yeah and it's also putting it into like one of the areas of depth they have they have Jazz Chisholm at second. They have Miguel Rojas at short, who's still oh, like a below league average bat, but he's such an important presence in that clubhouse. Like you have to have him, mm-hmm. uh, at least on the field, majority of the time. And Gene Segura is going to be your everyday shortstop or second baseman. Didn't Gene Segura played second base for the Phillies, right? He swapped off a little bit. Okay. I think. I, hold on. I bl- I think he was the second baseman. And having Gene Segura as your now shortstop, who's not a great defender, Jazz Chisholm, who Tom pointed out, was a lot better as the season went on at second base. I, I'm i not sure where the Marlins are going with this because they didn't address the need that's their outfield. That's true. I just talked to my Philadelphia Phillies resident expert, and he played second base the majority of the season with shortstop for a couple games. Yeah, so the Marlins just signed another second baseman. Basically, does it? I mean, you can. I mean, he can play shortstop just as well as nearly every shortstop. But like, it's just he's gonna be. It's it's not it's not the it's not the need that they needed to address the most. I would say this off season. I agree. I think they should have been more active in the outfield market. Yeah, I understand. Like, but like outside of, I mean, if they who would they have gone after? Mitch Mitch Haniger? They weren't gonna get Aaron Judge. Michael Conforto. Fair. Brandon Brandon Nemo. Nemo, like you got to spend money somewhere. And they spent it on Gene Segura. Yeah. I mean, again, it's not a bad move. No, no. It's not a bad move. We're not it's just like, we're not saying it's a bad move by any means. We're saying that it's just not the move they needed to make. Yes. Like right now, their projected outfield is John Birdie, Avisayu Garcia, and Brian De La Cruz. That's yeah. A pretty, I mean, that's a pretty good outfield. If you if you had if you had stacked that Gene Segura signing on top of a couple more signings, that wouldn't have looked as bad. But this is the one signing they did. What are yeah. they doing? I mean, there was a there was a couple outfielders on the market. I mean, they they were unlikely to land Nimmo, but Conforto, Haniger. I mean, these guys are even a Ben Attendee. That's what I'm saying. Like you could you could have gone out and get anyone. I mean, there's not that many people available anymore. Yeah, I the Marlins are entering Rockies territory. And you don't want to be entering I mean, Rockies I'm territory. I'm not going to say they're entering Rockies territory. I'd say they're like Red Sox, kind of. I, my issue is what's their direction? They, they're they a team that wants South. to win that doesn't want to spend. And they're not going to ever win or find success without doing spending. Or de- developing a single bat. That's what I'm, yeah. Like, they're, they're great at developing pitching. Like... It's a good organization, but the issue is when five of your top 10 prospects are pitchers, one of them has Tommy John surgery, and none of your bats are expected until 2024. Like, what are you doing? It's it's a fair assessment. And I don't know. I think, I think the Marlins just need to bide a little more time, kind of like the Nats. Like, they just got to wait a couple years because they're not going to compete against the Phillies, the Mets, or the Braves right now. Then, then do you suggest they they trade Sandy and they trade their whole pitching staff? That that's I mean, still I wouldn't say aging. that. I wouldn't say that. Not yet, but because by the time they reach this this prime golden era, Sandy's going to be like thirty one or something, and the rest of the rotation is going to be in their thirties now. Yeah. You have a lot of young pitching still. You still have that young pitching coming up, but you can't waste. You can't just waste Sandy and, and what they have going on here. I think I would almost trade Pablo Lopez before. He's twenty seven. I would trade Lopez in all honesty. Yeah, honestly, I I had expected him to get traded at the deadline last season, but I don't know. I, I, the Marlins are going to be a team that I'm going to need to look very closely on this this upcoming season to see like what happens. 